Welcome to Truth of the Spirit and Watching the Saints. I'm Patty Bruner. On this episode, we'll discuss movies made about a couple of modern day saints who were chosen to be popes of the Catholic Church. Pope Saint John 23rd and Pope Saint John Paul II. Angelo Roccalli was the 23rd Pope to choose John as his name. In the early days of the church, many of the early Christians had pagan names, some that honored pagan gods. And so the practice of becoming a new man in Christ also merited a new name. Modern often chose their name to honor a particular saint or a previous pope. The first pope, John Paul, was inspired to choose the names of the previous two popes, uh, John the 23rd and Paul the 6th as his name, so John Paul. His papacy only lasted 33 days. The society wondered if maybe God was correcting a mistake by the College of Cardinals, but when Pope John II immediately chose his name, it showed to the world that it wasn't so. I've chosen two movies about John 23rd, The Good Pope, John 23rd, starring Bob Haskins, and John 23rd, The Pope of Peace with Ed Asner. They both cover the rotund Pope who surprised those in the conclave, who chose him when he was 77 as a transitional Pope. By stepping forward, boldly to convene Vatican II, an international ecumenical council of the world's bishops to streamline the teachings of the Catholic Church and to address the needs of the modern church. Calling an ecumenical council was a monumental event. Before Vatican II restated the teachings into 58 original documents with instructions, decrees, letters, and followed by a post conciliar documents, the church had thousands upon thousands of documents from the previous 1900 years, including those from 16 previous ecumenical councils. Those teachings were not thrown out. You can look in the back of the Catechism of the Catholic Church and see the index of citations and see how Many of the teachings are still integrated into the teachings of the Catholic Church. Addressing the needs of the modern church is an ongoing process. Okay, back to the popcorn. The Good Pope was broadcast in 2003 as an Italian miniseries. It is dubbed into English, <coughs> which is much easier than reading subtitles, especially if you're watching the movie on your phone. Perhaps the voice actor is to blame, but I think maybe the script is at fault. This movie is flat, and it seems like the writer was focused on dropping Easter eggs into the story to explain why the future Pope wanted to change the language of the Mass from Latin to English and make sweeping changes. It doesn't invest our emotions with the main character, and we could have gotten to know the Pope a lot quicker by reading a paragraph or two in a bio. Amazon said that the music score was reminiscent of the composer's old spaghetti western themes. Perhaps this is an Easter egg too. Spaghetti westerns were imitations of the real American West. This movie was a poor imitation of a good movie and very disappointing. There is little in this miniseries that would call for canonization of John 23rd as a saint. Thank goodness someone else decided to take a look at his life on film with John 23rd. Broadcast one year earlier in 2002, as an eight-hour miniseries. Now, don't cringe at the length. I watched the movie on forum.org, and uh, with all of the previews, lookbacks, and commercials cut out, it was three hours and 23 minutes. Since I didn't watch the original miniseries when originally broadcast, 
probably an Italian. I can't tell you what else may have been trimmed to get to this current airtime. I've noticed that many of the Saint movies I watch are originally broadcast as miniseries. Their lives are so rich and worth the telling the truth about them. Adding a little poetic license can allow the characters to really come into our hearts rather than to be a dry historical figure. As a former binge watcher of various TV movies with cliffhanger mo endings, the length of a miniseries movie doesn't bother me at all. I've watched a lot of Pope movies on formed.org, including several that have not been canonized. It's been sweetly informative to watch the background in the early days of Pope Paul VI, Pope John Paul I, who, according to the movie, had a spiritual experience that promised him an early death after being elected, and Pius XII, which reveals the truth of his fight against the Nazis that he did in a non-public way. There's also a documentary about St. Celestine, who was the first pope to resign his office at the end of the Middle Ages. Now, most of these pope movies reveal a behind the scenes of the conclaves and the political posturing that takes place within the Vatican and outside, including those who criticize and seem to come against the popes. If watched in order of their pontificates, these movies also show how modern times and modern technology has affected the papacy while continuing the basic stability and succession of popes. Formed.org is a fee-based subscription service that not only includes movies, but documentaries, books, audios, Bible studies and other studies, and lots of catechetical talks and series by fabulous speakers. My local parish has opted to purchase a subscription for our whole parish and uses many of its Catholic teachings for formation. It serves fiction and nonfiction, adults and children, English and Spanish. Many of the movies I have reviewed is available on their formed.org. Unlike browsing YouTube or other subscription sites, the formed.org has already weeded out the unwatchable and the shouldn't watch movies. Well, back to the popcorn. I liked the line in the Ed Asner movie where John the 23rd, shortly before being selected as a pope, says to a fellow cardinal at the conclave, but we are not the ones who choose. And the cardinal replies, well then who does? And Cardinal Angelo Roncalli replies, the Holy Spirit. Later in the movie, we find out that he was always heavily influenced by the Holy Spirit, especially when he chooses to call the ecumenical council. These movies also show the differences of opinion by the advisors to the Pope and the wise decisions that surface time and again. The phrase, poor country priest, turns up several times in the Ed Asner portrayal of Pope John XXIII. His family's poverty gave him insight into the needs of the poor and his appreciation of helping of the helping hand he received from his uncle, necessary to leave his family and to study the priesthood, made the difference as he continued his work as a priest and a cardinal and a pope. The movie shows his ecumenical love that reaches across cultural and religious barriers, using his own meager resources to help others and how the dialogue between people who don't normally get along is pertinent to his peace plan and his plan of evangelism in the church. This movie constantly goes back and forth from the gathering of the conclave that would elect him and his time as Pope and flashbacks to his youth and earlier priesthood triggered by key phrases. 
it's an effective way to tell his story. Like the first movie, this movie is dubbed with English, but their voice actors allow you to forget it's dubbed. Obviously, Ed Asner's voice must have been dubbed into Italian when it was first released. His lips match the voice. The music is regal, and the times you see tears in Angelo's eyes, your own will be moist too. This is the type of inspirational saint movie that I like, historical in truth, but presented in such a way that you want to be like him and see how that could be possible. John the 23rd was born in 1881. He reigned as Pope from October 1958 to his death in 1963 and was canonized in April 2014. The next saint I will discuss is Pope St. John Paul II. Carol Watiwa was born in 1920 and elected Pope in 1978 when he was just 58 years old. He remained Pope for 27 years, dying in 2005 at the age of 85. He was Pope for so long that many people gave him the nickname of JP II. Since his canonization, some call him St. John Paul the Great. The three movies I have chosen are Pope John Paul II, Carol, the man who would be Pope, and Carol, the Pope, the man. These were originally miniseries and later DVD movies, and they are not rated by the USCCB Movie Review Service. They have a PG rating, which is appropriate for the war of violence that is too intense for younger viewers, but a good reminder for us of the horror of war at the individual level. Formed.org offers the 2005 movie Pope John Paul II, starring John Voigt as the mature Pope and Carrie Elwes as the young Carol. The other two are a sort of part one and part two, since the same actors, including Piotr Adam Zins as the Pope, appear in the movies broadcasted a year apart. I probably didn't pronounce Piotr's name correctly. He's Polish, and I don't speak Polish. Anyhow, all three movies are available on YouTube. The John Voigt movie begins with the assassination attempt in 1981, just three years after his election as Pope, then turns back to his young adult life, now played by Carrie Elwes, as a student and actor as the Germans invade Poland, quickly progressing to his clandestine illegal training as a seminarian by the Archbishop, who is a mentor and friend. The movie slips away from Carol several, several times to develop characters of the German and Russian armies and governments and the Polish underground that reveals the difficult times and interact with Carol as an adversary or as his friends. Carol Watiwa is appointed Bishop of Krakow at age 38 approved by the government because they doubt his ability. God has played a trick on them. He quickly becomes a thorn in their side as he supports workers in a nonviolent protest against the Russian government. Moving right along, we then see Bishop Carroll at Vatican II shining for all to see. He then petitions the prayers of Padre Pio for healing of a dying friend who miraculously recovers. We then move forward to Cardinal Carroll helping elect the first John Paul, then return to the conclave in 33 days for his own selection as Pope. Here John Voigt takes back the role of the newly elected Pope. John was 66 as he played the role, so he doesn't look quite as young and vibrant that JP II was as he stepped into the papacy 
except when he climbs into a windowsill to speak to the youth in Poland. But later in the movie, through makeup, he certainly resembles the elderly years of the pontiff. Later, the movie has some blurry, real footage of his 1993 visit to the World Youth Day at Mile High Stadium in Colorado. I had the opportunity to attend that to take my CYO group, but I allowed others to take my place. The last 30 minutes focuses on the Pope dealing with the Parkinson's disease, which was crippling and affected his voice, but not his spirit. The movie skips a lot of John Paul II's papacy, but how can you squeeze 27 years into a three-hour-long miniseries? Dubbed from English to Italian, it was shown to Pope Benedict and 700 uh, 7,000 others in 2005. The other movie that is also excellent is Carol, The Man Who Would Become Pope, which is uh, with a follow-up movie with the exact same characters and actors. Carol, The Pope, The Man. The DVD is also marketed as Carol, A Man Who Became Pope and the Pope, the man, including both miniseries for the complete life of John Paul II. The Pope was paid by the Polish actor Pietro Adam Sins, which gives it the flavor that brings authenticity to this bio movie. The first of the series shows Carol Watiwa from age 18 through the conclave that elected him. This first part uh, was screened by J.P. II, but was not released until after his death in 2005. The second miniseries followed quickly the next year, that, and that picks up Pope John Paul II uh, as he appears to the crowd after his election and then goes until his death. A lot of the part one movie expresses his relationship with his father and with the other students who entered the Polish underground, always showing traits that made him beloved throughout the world. I'm not sure how much poetic license was taken in this movie. There are many scenes of information totally new to me. It tends to try to romanticize his relationship with a fellow female student friend. But recognizing his teaching on theology of the body, I could easily recognize that his love for her was the same love he has for me, whom he never met. He has, it has a central character as a nemesis who recognizes Carol's danger to the communist government, and also a young spy who works for the nemesis, who even audio tapes the confessional trying to catch the young priest Carol in illegal activities. Listening to the tapes eventually converts the young spy. The violence of war and the menace of communists is a strong political statement in part one, but also helps us to comprehend the formation of the man who turned the world from violence toward peace. We see a small turning point for Carol in the turmoil as a character appears briefly as Carol seeks a hidden priest to have a mass said for the dead who advises him, we will win with love, not guns. The Nazis will disappear for evil will destroy itself. Carol then replies, but if love doesn't win out, the Nazis will just come back under a different name. The part two movie, Carol, the Pope, the Man, shows us his settling in at the Vatican with various staff members, the assassination attempt and injury, his relationship with Mother Teresa, his world travels, and often we get to hear John Paul II's own words as he writes letters and proclaims his thoughts to others. I did not research these to make sure that what was said was truly said by the Pope. And I must say I wondered about the anti-war speech given about Kuwait and Saddam Hussein in the middle of the movie. 
But later on, we see him in the hospital to have an operation to remove a tumor. And he goes to the bedside of a dying boy. The angry mother says, tell God to go away. And the Pope answers, I can tell him, but he won't listen. He knows his place is here with you. This saint is here with us too. With real footage of a car bomb attack in Palermo, we get John Paul II's response for repentance and his constant pursuit of peace. There are a lot of political statements throughout. And then we get our heart broken as he travels to Africa to see the kidnapping of children to be made soldiers and the struggle to repair bodies and souls. And then the Pope tells a suffering young man dying of AIDS, do not give up hope. Christ is with you. We later see that when the Pope suffers, he does not give up hope as he suffers greatly with Parkinson's disease. The extreme vigor of the Pope as a young priest, bishop, and Pope, highlighted by his activities, especially his love for the great outdoors of hiking and skiing, provide a startling contrast to his condition in his later years. We get a beautiful, small taste of his theology of the body as he responds to questions about abortion and contraception in connection with AIDS. We see the continuing spiritual maturity of our Pope as he gets older and faces the problems of the world. A few times, Pietri, as the Pope, looks younger than in the previous scene. I can forgive this, especially since there's a lot of time hopping in the movie. As in the earlier movie, we see up close the many physical struggles the Pope underwent in the privacy of his inner circle. We watch the suffering of his friends who have also grown old. John Paul's incapacity to move and speak freely reveals his embrace of the suffering of the elderly with grace and at times frustration. Hard to watch, but his determination is inspiring for an aging generation. At his death, we are treated to actual footage of his funeral and the future Pope Benedict the Sixteenth blessing his casket. If you want more of Pope St. John Paul II, there are also many, many documentary film clips of John Paul II. A couple that seems uh, to be geared toward children on YouTube includes St. John Paul II, The Life of the Holy Pope by Catholic Link, and an EWTN presentation, Pope John Paul II. During the next episode of Watching the Saints, we'll find some saints that are not quite as well known as these wonderful Pope Saints. You've been listening to Watching the Saints, a movie review series on Truth of the Spirit with Patty Bruner. I invite you to subscribe and come back for more. With the Holy Spirit, there is always more. Amen. This is the Padua Podcast Network, padawamedia.com.